So talking about TensorFlow, it's a deep learning library. We just saw on the other slides also. I'm just putting all, all in there. It's basically for computation, uh, creating computational graphs and all those things. And later on, you run those, take making those. I have given an example of uh, how the graph looks like the computation you have. Uh, remember that uh, those graph right? the computation this plus this and all those things. Right? This is your yeah. Nodes in the graph represent operations. Right? This is your node. Actually, this is your node. Represents node represents the operation actually what you are doing, and edges represent the tensors. These are the edges. This represents the tensor, where you can have a multi-dimensional tensor. We have multi-dimensional tensors, either two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional tensor, which is same as your. Uh, Three. This is your rank zero. The rank three matrix, something like that. Right? I'll give an assignment as such for understanding these tensors. It's a multi dimensional array object where you, you store various information there. Right? Those things are there. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, uh, yeah, probably the Keras library. So Keras plays an important role by helping the small, small activities. It's an API, actually, high level development API, written on Python and capable enough of running the uh, on top of TensorFlow, CNDK, and Tiana. So it uses all these libraries, either of these libraries. And uh, make sure if you have TensorFlow installed on top of it, uh, you can use Keras, like it uses TensorFlow in it, and then it does that. So, um, probably you can install Kano or TensorFlow, TensorFlow would be easy enough. You can call it, and that's very good to learn as well. Uh, it was developed and focused on enabling the fast experimentations. So, in order to, uh, if you look, and try developing the application of uh, deep learning right? using TensorFlow. We need to have placeholder constants and all those things. And then you have to have sessions and all those things. We'll be looking for it. So, but Keras makes it easy. Just add layers, do your job. That's all. Focus on your job rather than defining the graph, running the sessions and all those things. Right? That is what it, it made, Keras made that. Um, so it can be, it may seamlessly running the graphs on CPU and GPUs. It's efficient enough. So yeah, I just in between added a command to install those packages so that this can be easy enough to times. So installation guide, uh, I have provided that in a hyperlink once you open this, it will prompt you to TensorFlow guidelines and all those things. So if you have a GPU instance, you can use this. I do have that. I, I install that on my GPU using web install TensorFlow GPU. Make an environment not affecting the global uh, stuff there. So I've created the GPU instance and then uh, installed on all, all of that. So people can install on either of the based on the availability. So Keras guidelines is your, I mean, you can just look in for that and uh, pip install. Once you have this, take this pip, pip install Keras. TensorFlow has a constants, um, three different uh, term, terminology, four, four or five different terminology I want to use, which are most important when you go for an interview on TensorFlow or deep learning. Right? So what are those? Uh, the constants for any programming language is the value of uh, object which remains same for the programming language, for, or for the program, right? That is what a constant means in any other programming language also. Right? Those things are there. And variables are one which varies. Uh, um, it's variable and container for a given data type, but we need to in answer. As such, if you want to see in other programming languages, the values can be changed at the execution time or whatsoever. Same as in this uh, Python TensorFlow, 
your variable is a container of for a data type. But what you need to do is you need to specify what type of data is it. It you need to de declare it while using it, right? So we'll see that what is variable and what is placeholder. So there is a slight difference between placeholder and a variable. So a uh, placeholder is same as your variable, but it differs in a situation that uh, you need not to declare at the initial initial stage. Placeholder are the one that can hold a value during during the runtime. No need to initialize the value while declaring, right? So that's it. Any any of these, uh, if you see, um, it will be like a placeholder. A variable is your, let's say A is the one, right? It's a place, a memory location actually. In fact, if you see, it will be a memory location address, which is pointing here. So internally, if you make it a lock saying that it will be a constant, right? It will be a constant value. And if you have a, a value called, uh, if you are looking for variable in TensorFlow, you specify that only integers can go into this. Right, you are making the constraints of variable to be this one, but placeholder. If you see what it does, it it is open for any uh, sort of data type. It can be integer, it can be float, it can be character, whatever, whatever data type are available in that, it can be taken in. Right, that differentiates between three different stuff. So it cannot if it is a five. Throughout the program execution, it will be five. In this, you can put in whatever five, replace that with six, replace that with seven, replace that with ten, whatever, based on the latest element there. But it should be an integer format. It cannot be your other, or probably like that, right? You, you, they arrive to be five. And the placeholder can be anything. Else. Got it? The difference between these three, three terminology. Then what we did, we, what we do is, we take, we take this graphs as most important in the TensorFlow. It defines the actual computation segment, what actually things are going to carry out in the entire uh, computation, what things can need to be done. So let's say there are two images, right? You want to superimpose them using some. Uh, kernel functions or you are imposing them or what or whatsoever the lot of data in it you are doing that you're defining the graph first graph is defined which is validated and all then it will pass on to cpu or gpu whatever and then based on the session whenever session starts at that point of time you you do this computation that is how you first define the graph and then you pass on to the stuff. It, in this declaration, what actually does it, it does uh, not do any computations, nor holds any values in it. So it is just a merely um, graph which doesn't have anything. It just defines what needs to be done, right? In the session, what you do, computation graph that defines in the model needs a session to allocate actually memory. The allocation of memory and run is taken care in this session allocation, okay? And the scope of these values will be within that particular session. I am sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPath.